Stay in your lane, Warren Buffett. I mean, I know you know investing and you're one of the wealthiest men on the planet and you're trying to give your money away. I've driven by your personal house in Nebraska. I'm not really a stalker, but you tell people you're in a brick ranch. I have to understand where you're coming from when you talk to people about REITs. That's a real estate investment trust. However, that's the wrong message for the bulk of Americans who need to be thinking about why they wanna buy a primary residence. The first one is, you have to live somewhere. And if you own it, the payment that you're making does have some interest payable to the mortgage holder. However, if you're renting, you're paying a 100% interest rate because all of your money is going to somebody else and you don't have any chance to pay it down over time or build the equity. If we just look at the historic rates of return on real estate right here in Charlotte, North Carolina, we are somewhere-ish around 5% a year over the long haul. That means sometimes it's up and sometimes it's down. And no, that is not gonna be a 25% return, but it does act like a blue chip stock, like a Duke Power would operate. And that's gonna be something you can rely upon over time. So from an investment standpoint, it still makes decent sense, but there's more to owning real estate than just the money piece. I want you to consider this piece. People who live in homes that they own their kids have better educational outcomes. Now you may be saying, but Lee, it depends on the neighborhood. It actually doesn't. If you look at any zip code, regardless of socioeconomic status, the kids that are in owned homes do better. Now you wanna ask me why? Y'all, it's stability. I mean, you think about it. Any kid who's in an apartment might have a very nice apartment, but when the lease comes up, if the landlord sells and the folks have to move, they may not have a chance to stay put. It could be that they raise the rents and they can't afford to stay put. And so that kid may wind up with multiple addresses, which seems okay on the surface, but we know that when you know where you're getting off the school bus, it changes how you feel about life. And that changes how you feel about homework and school. And frankly, let's also remember the friendships. A kid in an owned neighborhood is probably gonna have some other kids nearby that are on that same school bus and they're gonna see them over and over for a longer period of time that's stability in relationships, which also adds to higher educational outcomes. Don't forget that little aspect that goes along with owning real estate. And let's look at another outcome that many of y'all don't know about. There are increased healthcare outcomes from owning real estate. I know, right? Think about this too. If you live in a house that you own, you're more likely to be able to patch things up when they go awry. If you're in a house that's owned by a landlord, a good landlord's probably taking care of things as they come up. They don't want deferred maintenance. Some landlords don't care as much. So you could be in a property with a leaky roof, with bad heat and air, a water heater that's failed. If you own it, there's a chance that you've got a church community that can come help you fix it up. You may have the savings. You could even tap a home equity line to take care of the house. All of those things add up to healthcare outcomes because we know that things like fungal growth, AKA mold, can change people's breathing patterns. It can add to COPD and asthma, and all of those things can shorten your lifespan and have you in the doctor's office more. And I don't know about y'all, but I really don't like to go to the doctor's office because I think you pick up more things there than you leave behind. So let's also look at the data on this. There's a white paper that was published a couple of years ago to support the fact that people in good housing have better healthcare outcomes. Now this actually didn't apply to the home ownership piece, but it's worthy of mention because it has to do with the care and taking care of these buildings. LIHTC, which are low income housing tax credits. One of the smartest things I think we've seen the government come up with, it is a public private partnership to allow developers to build housing in all ends of the price spectrum. When somebody moves from substandard housing into well cared for housing, they reduce the state's Medicaid burden. That's crazy, right? So for every $1 in credits, the state's Medicaid burden is reduced by $3 because the human living in that property has a far better place to live. That's huge. That's what housing can do. And I think we forget that sometimes when all we talk about are prices going up or we worry about interest rates, there are all these other factors involved. Now let's go back to the money for just a second, Warren, because I know that you know all the ins and outs of the tax code. 
there is still a benefit called the mortgage interest deduction. When you're talking about standardized deductions on your tax returns, you may not be able to itemize like you once did, but that mortgage interest deduction is a huge advantage to a lot of people. I can tell you as a practicing realtor for the last 23 years, the best phone calls I get are from the first time buyers who file their taxes after they bought their house and they go, oh, I have a real return. Yes, you do, friend. So first of all, go fix your withholdings. But then what do they use those dollars for? Many people will use it to upgrade the house, change out the flooring, the paint, the appliances, the heat and air, the windows to make it a better property. Some people take it and add to the outside. They add a fence, they add a better patio so they can be outside more. Some people take those dollars and pay down the mortgage so they can get the debt gone faster. But that happens when you have a little bit of an advantage. So why do we offer the mortgage interest deduction? There are a lot of pundits out there that would say we shouldn't offer it at all. But those pundits would be wrong in my personal opinion. I do believe that the tax code should benefit homeowners and here's why. First of all, increased educational outcomes. Don't we all want kids to do better? That's the next generation of leaders. I really hope they'll have better educational outcomes, better healthcare outcomes. Our healthcare system is stressed pretty much all the time and I don't wanna take any more drugs than I have to take either and I want my neighbors to be healthier too. But then let's talk about what else property ownership does. When people live in a house and they own it, the pride factor kicks in. Let's don't forget how important it is to love where you live. And I don't mean pride like the seven deadly sins because it's the top sin, but I mean that feeling that comes from something being yours. And where do we see that? We see that when people buy a house for the first time and they plan the garden. They could put some tomato plants outside. They might put some azaleas out front. They start cutting the grass. They say, I wanna paint these shutters and dress it up a little bit. Oh, I wanna go clean the gutters so it looks as good as possible from the street. And then after they get their own house zhuzhed up a little bit, they go look at the neighborhood entrance and say, how can we make these monuments nicer? And they'll go power wash it and take some of those buttercups and go sprinkle them out there at the front entrance and meet the neighbors and say, hey, let's talk about how we can make the curbs look nicer our community mailboxes could be taken care of. And then you start looking at things like crime. Crime goes down in owned neighborhoods. And why is that? Because neighbors who start looking out for one another don't want foolishness going on in the neighborhood. So then they will call the police and say, please come stop this mess that's going on over here. And when people take care of each other, the bad guys don't wanna be around that. So they will go somewhere else and find another target. And don't forget that when we talk about fair housing, one of the tenets of fair housing is safe neighborhoods. Most people want to live somewhere where they feel comfortable walking outside to the mailbox, saying hello to a neighbor and getting back in the house. So Warren Buffett, if you are forgetting all of those factors, then you might tell people not to invest in real estate, but I haven't forgotten all of the humanity that goes along with buying and selling real estate, and neither should y'all. And let me add one more little asterisk here. Should you be investing in real estate as an investment outside of primary residence? Well, I say yes, not just because I'm a landlord and I want to have some confirmation bias, to be honest. But here's why you think about real estate as an investment. It is a tangible item. For those of y'all that get really upset about the volatility in the stock markets, real estate doesn't experience that kind of volatility. Even if the underlying equity on the house were to dip because of economic conditions, the rents keep coming in. Now that's of course, if you've priced it appropriately, if it's sitting vacant for a long time, you should probably look at what you're charging and adjust to the market. But I will say that during the last recession, it was my real estate that did better than the stock market because people had to have somewhere to live. And I believe in providing good workforce housing. So I do like to buy properties on the lower end of the rent spectrum because it gives me a way to participate in my community as a landlord with good, decent, safe housing that is a reach for many people. So remember that when you're thinking about investment real estate, First of all, you shouldn't watch that movie Pacific Heights. It's a terrible idea. Remember that though, when you first got out of college or out of high school and you went to find your first rental, you needed something affordable and safe and clean and decent. And that's what investment real estate can allow you to be a part of in the community. And then when you get bigger, maybe you'll invest in REITs. But for me, I like the mom and pops. I am a mom and pop. And if you wanna find out more about your primary residence or being a mom and pop investor, you call and reach out to me anytime. And Warren Buffett, if you wanna talk, I'm all ears.